The Notion API has just released in public beta, but a lot of users may be confused what this actually means and how they can actually make use of new features today. So I thought I'd make a quick video explaining a few easy and practical ways you can make use of the powerful API features that are now available by integrating with your Google Calendar and Todoist. Let's first begin by explaining what an API actually is. An API stands for Application Programming Interface. And to explain it in simple English, it's basically a way for programs to communicate with each other and send each other requests as well as information about what's going on in their application lives. Think of each API as a language that an application speaks in. So Notion has just created its own language or new API, so other applications don't actually know how to speak this new language. So this is where we need to have a middleman, which in this case will be Zapier or Automate.io. Now their role is to act as a translator, since they're fluent in basically every language, and they're going to be translating this new Notion language into something that other applications such as Google Calendar and Todoist are able to understand. And by doing so, they can now communicate and update each other. So for today's demonstrations, we're going to be using automate.io in order to integrate the Notion app API with Google Calendar and Todoist. So first we need to sign up real quick. So I already signed up, so I'm just going to log in right here. And the first thing we're going to do is actually jump into Notion and set up a database, which is where all the information is going to be stored when we enter a log in either Google Calendar or Todoist. By the way, just going to quickly shout out my other video that I'll be releasing in a few days, which is how to transform your Notion into this beautiful template you see right here. So if you're interested, then feel free to like and subscribe, and the video will be out shortly. Anyway, back to the video. So these fields are going to be used later on by the other APIs that consume the Notion API, and so basically, these fields will be populated by the information that we receive from Google Calendar or Todoist, or basically whatever API you're connecting with. So in this case, I'm going to create one called uh, created at, which is a timestamp for when the log or entry is created, as well as another one for the date and description. The date is useful for Google Calendar, for keeping track of um, events, and description is just there, just to show some more information that you can store. So jumping back to automate.io, we want to create a new bot now. So we select create a bot, and we're now presented with two options, which is a trigger and an action. In this case, we want Google Calendar to be our trigger. So anytime a new event is made on Google Calendar, we want this data to also be present in our Notion database we just made. So the only field we need to populate here is which calendar is involved, um, so which will be tracked when any event is added there. And for the actions, we just want to populate the corresponding field, which is what we get from the output fields from Google Calendar. So in this case, for the database, we want to select the database we just made on Notion. We do need to quickly check that in the Notion table we are populating that we have given edit permissions to the application that we will be sending data to to the API. So to do this, select share in the top right of the table page and make sure automate is selected with edit permissions. So going back, now we can just refresh the database list and make sure that our new table is there. Now all we have to do is match each output field we want to display in the Notion entry with the corresponding input which are the fields we created earlier in the Notion database. The names for these are fairly similar with each other so they are pretty easy to match up. Once we're done we hit save at the top right and from there we just need to turn the bot on so it can track entries. So from here we just need to make sure that the event is activating properly. So head on over to Google Calendar, create a sample event. I'm going to call it Notion Edit Video since that's what I'll be spending my time on later. Go on over, press I'm done, and now Automate.io is going to check and see if they can read the event properly so that it can submit it to Notion. So after getting the congratulations screen, the last thing we need to do is check on Notion that it's actually appeared inside the test database we just made. So heading on back over to Notion, we can see that the Notion Edit Video has successfully been added to the Notion database successfully, just like magic. So now let's create a new bot for Todoist. In this case, we're actually going to have Notion as our trigger because this time we want to populate Todoist with our Notion um, data. So in this case, we're gonna be using the same database from before. And in this specific instance, we need to um, specify the created time property, which is why we created the created at property in Notion earlier on in the video. So in this case, Todoist is a little bit more complicated. It has a little bit more fields that you can populate. So you can kind of go through and see what you want to drag in from Notion. 
So when you're done, you want to press the done screen and turn the bot on. And now this time we're going to be triggering it through Notion. So in this case, I'm going to add a field in the Notion test database. Hopefully this goes into Todoist and populate some other fields as needed. And yeah, after this, I just head on over back to the uh, automate.io, press I'm done, and it will check on Todoist to make sure it's all connected properly. And now that it's done, I'm just gonna head on over to my phone and check Todoist to make sure that my to-do list is actually populated with the correct fields. And as you can see, there it is. So yeah, a lot of things are already possible and pretty useful already. So let me know how you're planning on using the Notion API in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Feel free to check out my other videos where I also talk about tech and productivity.